today on ONE. See how UCF engineering researchers are creating robots to give people with disabilities more independence. Then, where do you stash more than 400,000 arthropods? And UCF's bug closet, of course. All of my friends think that I'm crazy, um, but the fact that none of them are alive kind of helps a little bit. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss this. And later, we'll meet a local artist who will show us his patriotic tribute to our veterans. All this and more coming up on today's show, This Is One. Hi, and welcome to One. I'm Shandrea Thomas. In our show today, we'll bring you two stories about exciting UCF research. They range from high tech to highly gross. We'll also give you a special behind the scenes look at a new memorial unveiled on campus to honor our armed forces. But first, we start with a story from the space age. We are many years away from having personal robots do our bidding, but robotic technology is giving those with disabilities a helping hand. An engineering team from the University of Central Florida is testing a mechanical arm that may one day help those with disabilities reach for their independence. It's a simple looking robotic arm, but it could change a life. This down the road could really be a viable option for individuals with little to no function. Bob Melia takes the arm through its paces. A quadriplegic since an accident as a teenager, Bob is helping to guide UCF engineers who have developed the robotic arm system. Now sometimes this is slower than you would want, but if you can imagine someone that has no function below the level of shoulders, being only able to look at the Lucky Charms, but has no physical ability to grab the Lucky Charms, having it come to him a little slower than that you might be able to grab it and put it on the table I will bring this item is, to is a sacrifice they're willing to take. As spinal cord coordinator for Orlando Health, Bob recruited volunteers with varying levels of spinal cord damage to test the arm and tweak its capabilities for the team led by UCF assistant professor Amon Bahal. The needs that many patients specify is they want to, you know, scratch their head. It's just a simple thing as scratching your head. It's sometimes not possible for an individual with, uh, you know, with an injury, a spinal cord injury, for example. So can the robot physically interact with both the environment and the human being? Can it be safe? And can it be accurate? In a study conducted with Orlando Health, volunteers put the new system to the test. The computer program is based on how the human eye sees. A touch screen, computer mouse, joystick, or voice command sends the arm into action. Then sensors mounted on the arm see an object, gather information, and relay it to the computer, which completes the calculations necessary to move the arm and retrieve the object. In some ways, it worked too well. Get it in the area, click the, click the up button, it raises up a little bit. If you hold it up, it's going to raise up higher. A surprising finding is that most participants found the arm too easy. I am going to approach and grab the item for you. They prefer the manual mode, which requires them to think several steps ahead and either physically type in instructions or verbally direct the arm with a series of precise commands. I will bring this item to you now. They favored the manual mode even though they did not perform tasks as well with it. I just have to confirm that what the robot is going after is what I really want and it's going to ask me questions along the way. This helps you to plan out those motions, you know, this gives you feedback, this can do the whole thing for, for you. We are intending to take it to a place where, you know, it can be more interactive. I'm going to move to your left. Professor Bahal's initial research was funded with a grant from the National Science Foundation and through a pilot grant with the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Professor Bahal is working on a hybrid arm that uses laser, ultrasound, and infrared technologies. The goal is to make the arm motion smoother, more interactive, and more accurate. 
Imagine spending your time being surrounded by thousands of bugs. That's what some researchers do at UCF every day. Producer Chris O'Donnell takes us into the inner workings of the bug closet. Currently we have over 420,000 specimens, all labeled, pinned, and identified here. And this rivals major uh, research collection around the major universities. Dr. Ho Jin Song is talking about what is affectionately called the biology department's bug closet. Bug closet started uh, as a store Flirton's personal collection about 20 years ago. He started to build up a small collection uh, with him and students go out to field, collect insects, bring back, pin them, just start a small collection. Officially known as the University of Central Florida Collection of Arthropods, the bug closet contains everything from bees to beetles. People think, oh, what's the value of you know, keeping all these dead bugs in a, in a closet? But now we are beginning to understand that this actually contains lots of information, lots of historical information. So the next step for us will be to unearth these um, data that are associated with the specimens. New specimens are being added to the bug closet all the time. Student volunteers spend hours numbering and labeling them before they are permanently added to the collection. Some people, I mean, will always be freaked out by bugs, but there are a lot of people who find it interesting the more they learn. My friends think that I'm crazy, um, but the fact that none of them are alive kind of helps a little bit. I don't find it creepy at all just because I have an interest in, in bugs. They're very dynamic and they're very different from, from most, most things that we know very well, like mammals. So learning about them and, and about their habits and about where they live is very important, especially in such a changing world. They're fascinating. They have a lot of diversity in all the different species of it. And a lot of their, uh, just their mannerisms and habits are different than ours, but they're kind of similar at the same time. I have a lot of friends that help me collect They'll go and they'll find like a bug dead in their house and they call me up and give it to me as a present. Dr. Song came to UCF in part to raise the stature of the bug closet. He says his ultimate goal is to turn the bug closet into a major research collection, which will be connected to other natural history collections across the country. UCF's collection is so extensive that scientists from all over the world use the bug closet as a resource. When we come back, we'll show you the work and inspiration that went into the construction of UCF's new Veterans Memorial. Stay with us. Award-winning sculptor Don Reynolds was one of the artists who created the Veterans Commemorative Site on UCF's main campus. The site includes sculpted marble from Italy as well as bronze pieces. Interesting. We're going to have to raise the flagpole up just a little bit so we've got clearance to for the halyard mechanism. It's aluminum. It's black anodized, which means it's been put into a tank and it's been sealed with uh, electrolysis. I came up with the concept of doing horizontal columns all five branches of the armed forces coming together in flank, in unison, coupled together with a, with a bronze uh, collar that would encircle the flagpole. So all of this is basically, you know, it's very symbolic in a, in a patriotic way. This is really, really special for the university, for the community, and most importantly for all the veterans. This is awesome.
This isn't the only work Don Reynolds has produced for UCF, who, by the way, is a Navy veteran himself. He also created the Charging Night, which is located just in front of Bright House Network Stadium. Now let's take a look at some upcoming events. Thanks for joining us as we continue to make our university one with our community. We leave you with a look at 24-Hour Nights, a photo essay by photographer Jason Green.